Now that you've seen how to build a REDCap project and how to get data into REDCap, let's take a look at how to get data out. To get data out of REDCap, you're going to want to go to the Data Exports, Reports, and Stats page. First, let's take a look at how to build a report so you can look at a subset of your data. To do this, you'll go to Create New Report. The first thing you have to do is give your report a name. Then, you'll select who is able to see your report. All users who have access to reports, only specific users. The next step is to decide what items you want in your report. There are four different ways to add a specific variable to your report. The first is to simply choose an entire instrument. Second, you can use the Quick Add feature. Here, you just check the boxes of which fields you want in the report. You can pick items from the drop-down menu, or you can type in the name. If you want the fields to be in a different order, you can always drag and drop until they're in your preferred order. Next, we can add filters. For example, I may not want everybody in my project to show up in the report. Perhaps I only want people who are older than 18 and younger than 55. Live filters allow you to use multiple choice questions to look at subsets of even this group. So for example, maybe I'll want to be able to switch back and forth between people who liked the picture I showed and people who didn't. Finally, you can choose what field to order things by. By default, everything's ordered by the record ID, but I can change that. and add more options. And I can choose if they're in ascending or descending order. I choose Save Report. And then I can see the data I've selected. You notice that everyone is in the age range I supplied, and that people are listed in last name in ascending order, and then first name in descending order. I can use the Live Filter to look at only certain subsections of the data. With either my report or with my entire data set, REDCap provides some basic stats and charts I can use. I'll find these on the Stats and Charts page. I have the option of looking at the data for the entire report or for just a specific record. For text fields, it'll simply give me the N and tell me if any data is missing. For number fields, I'll get the min, max, standard deviation, the sum, and the percentile breakdowns. It will also provide me with a nice graph I can use that shows me the distribution. With multiple choice questions, it will show me the answer distribution among the choices and let me know how many different unique fields have been selected. I will have the option to also view the data as a bar chart or as a pie chart. And if I want to, I can download the image. Finally, I can export my report, or on the main page, I can choose to export all of my data. So here we can see the options for exporting data. There are multiple export formats you can use. REDCap plays very well with all the major statistical programs, SPSS, SAS, R, and Stata, and you can download it as an XML file. If you download it for one of the statistical packages, you'll be given a series of files to download. If you download these and run them in the order you're directed to, it will export your data set and import it into the statistical program of your choice, formatted for use in that program. The other two main options are to download it as a CSV file, which you could open in Microsoft Excel. There are two options for this. We recommend that you usually download this as raw data. Raw data means that you will get the variable name instead of the long variable label. For example, cigarettes week 
instead of how many packs of cigarettes do you smoke in a week? You also get the coded answers for multiple choice questions instead of getting the long labels attached to them. This is much easier to use for analysis, and if you are doing any kind of data cleaning that you want to re-import into REDCap, it will have to be in the raw format to do the import. You can also download it as labels. This will give you the long field label and the labels attached to multiple choice questions. You also have a number of de-identification options. These options allow you to limit the amount of sensitive information that you're exporting out of the project. If you have limited export rights in the project, as specified in your user rights, some of these may be checked for you already and you won't be able to change them. You can remove all tag identifiers, anything that has been tagged as an identifier in the data dictionary, or you can choose to hash the record ID field. This changed the record name to an unrecognizable value. You should never use an identifier as the record ID, but if you did so, this would allow you to export it without that record ID being recognizable in the export. You can also choose to remove freeform text fields, either all unvalidated text fields, anything other than things such as dates and numbers, or you can remove notes and essay box fields. All dates below the year level that relate to a patient are also considered identifying information. You can choose to remove all date time fields from the project, or you can choose to shift all the dates by a value of 0 and 364 days. This makes it very difficult when you export to match a specific date in the export to a patient's date of birth or an appointment date on the calendar. All the values within a record are shifted by the same amount, so you can still do date difference calculations. Finally, there are a few advanced options for data formatting as well. You can set a CSV delimiter character. A CSV stands for Comma Separated Variable. Most commonly, this means that there's a comma between each variable in the project. If that isn't the default way you're exporting to, you can change to something else. You can also force all numbers into a specified decimal format. On our red cap, the default is a period as a decimal point. However, if that's not the default way you are located, it will not be understandable, or would not work well with how you have other programs on your machine formatted, you could change it to a comma as well. You make your selections and export data, and then you're able to download the file and look at it offline.